Step number three is going to be impressive, if you know what I'm saying. Welcome back to Learning to Make a Quilt. I am Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics, making it fun, and I'm doing a series of fun, quick, little learn to quilt videos, step by step. So we've done the cutting, we've done the patchwork sewing, so we're now on to the pressing, the ironing of the fabrics. And you've always heard it said by one of my arch enemies himself, Darth Vader, press to the dark side, and here is why. When you press, it, well, and I should say press when possible to the dark side. Let's not get carried away. There's all these rules out there in quilting, and most of them really don't need to be followed. This one is important if possible, because if you don't press to the dark side, what may happen is you may get some of this bleed through where you can actually see the fabric on the lighter fabric. Now, this is a light, light fabric, uh, Moon Cotton Couture from Michael Miller. I just love it. Um, and I pressed press the seam over to the lighter of the two fabrics. When you're working with like bright, your lighter yellows, bright whites, those kinds of things, this is something you may want to be cautious of. It's really no big deal whatsoever, but at the same point, it can also be used when you're pressing, if you press all of your fabrics to the darker fabric, when you start to line them up by contrast, a lot of the times that helps you nest your seams when you're putting your blocks or your units back together, which will be video number four coming down the pipeline. But let's get back to pressing these. And you know, we all have our different irons that we love and different ways that we love irons. Um, I'll tell you, I like an iron that has auto shut off, but I really like Sherman. Where's my Sherman? I should have had him up here on the set waiting for us. There he is. Come on, Sherman. Oh, there he goes. This is Sherman, built like a tank, an old Black & Decker iron. You can see it's been through the war and back. But this is a fantastic iron, super heavy, hardcore, and I really use it for a lot of my fusible applique projects because I want the weight and I want the extreme heat of this. But for the most part, irons like that could just burn your house down, so you gotta be really careful with them, right? So I like something like this that's got an auto shut off to it, that's nice and portable. This happens to be the Panasonic iron. It's cordless, which makes my life easy. It's got steam feature, which I also like. But all of these things are opinion. There's a million different ways that folks will suggest that you iron. I think the only thing we mostly agree on is the ironing to the dark side. So I'm gonna pull out this fabric to iron it to the dark side. I'm gonna simply hold the darker of the two fabrics in the air. And what I like to do is I like to kind of run the iron up against the edge first. And I'm actually running the iron on the right sides or the print sides of the fabric. And then I can go ahead and just flatten this over like this. Okay, one of the things I will point out is the flatter the edge, oh, that's nice. The flatter the edge on the iron itself, the easier it is for setting that seam, the more crisp it makes it. Uh, this iron's pretty neat because it's for getting in and out of points and things. Press into the dark side. Go through each of your pieces. You can press on top of other pieces if you're stacking them up and as you go. The other thing that I learned a million years ago, and I really strongly believe in this, and I think it's important we discuss this while we're pressing, this might be the most impressive thing I say. Fabric has memory, especially cotton fabrics have memory. So right now, these fabrics that I've just ironed or pressed, however you want to call it, they're still warm. And so fabric having memory, it will go back to the state it was last cool. So if I move it while it's hot, it's just going to go back to the wrinkly old state. But if I let it sit here until it's nice and cool like the first one is now, as I move it, it stays nice and crisp and flat. And I was told that in a wonderful class at a quilt market a million years ago, and I believe it, and I've been trying to do my best to let the fabrics cool in place before I haul them off to the next stack to become blocks and units and all those wonderful things that we're gonna do in the next video, but just take a second and just let it chill. Okay, glad you were here. Like I said, we're gonna start talking about putting some of these blocks together. See you real soon.